Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome back to Gaddis Retrospectives! And the Gaddis Retrospectives! On the Tekken, Gaddis Retrospectives! Is coming up to the final part. So let's not waste any time and get straight on with Spyro 3, Year of the Fuck Tekken 3. So, Tekken 2 was even a bigger success than Tekken 1. Along with Tekken 1, Tekken 2 was a bestseller in the UK and received many honours and rewards, such as the 22nd greatest video game of all time in 1996, the third greatest PS1 game of all time in 1997, and even the 59th greatest game of all time in 2001. It also, on August 27th, 1996, had the single largest shipment of any PS1 title at that point, shipping 400,000 copies on day one. Fuck me. Oh, and it was also the first fighter that I ever played so I guess that's pretty fucking good for my 3D fighter's virginity, wouldn't you say? And as to be expected, it would take a while to come up with a fresh concept to exceed expectations, so Namco spent nearly two years after version A of the second instalment to tweak, iron and perfect anything that they felt needed tackling. And then Tekken 3 burst onto the arcade scene on March 20th, 1997, which for North America was only an 11 month gap. I can't take the talent, guys. And then, the PlayStation Console Edition arrived over a year later with even more features and characters exclusive to the awesome people. You know, the basic shit. Anyway, along with having a very special place in my heart, Tekken 2, as we discussed, vastly, vastly improved everything that Tekken 1 brought to the table. And I mean everything. So much so that this part 3 of Tekken videos that I'm doing will be very, very difficult to execute. Because... Like... What the fuck can I talk about? I more or less called Tekken 2 a near perfect game, and not just for its time, it even stands up today along with all the other modern fighters. And so inevitably we come to Tekken 3, and a lot was riding on this game's shoulders, because after all, Namco had to be certain that a third instalment in their fighting franchise had to exist away from the shadow of Tekken 2, and somehow, someway, improve upon it. So the question is, did it do it? Well, let's find out all that in a second, because right now we have to get on with some more story time! So, in an incredible display of one-upmanship, the Mishima Father-Son Cliff Dropping Championships were getting tight. Heihachi started with a great spectacle of throwing Kazuya down a cliff at five years old, but then many, many years later, the prodigal son returned for Kazuya to then come back with a vicious blow and throw Heihachi down the same cliff. I guess that makes them even, but no! Because then Heihachi decides to throw another punch on the step higher by throwing Kazuya into a volcano and- Wait! That is hilarious! And so, Kazuya is, unsurprisingly, not a playable or fightable character in this game, but an old Heihachi is. Yay! And after Heihachi threw Kazuya down that cliff, he did attempt to one-up him on the satisfactory glare, but, I don't know, it was very... But it was definitely no... Anyway, now, 15 years after Tekken 2 and after Heihachi regained power over the Mishima Zaibatsu, he established the Tekken Force, who were more or less his bodyguards and an entirely professionally militant organisation built around protecting the Zaibatsu. Heihachi learnt about a being known as Ogre, whose immense power he wanted to extract for his own gain after seeing the effects of the Devil Gene on Kazuya. But let's go back a little bit here. It turns out that many years ago, Ogre had been killing the greatest martial artist all over the world, and at that time, June Kazuma from the last game could feel his presence and got the idea that she may be the next victim. It also turns out that she birthed a son called Jin after getting <laughs> with Kazuya, and so when Jin was about 15, June told him to seek Heihachi if anything should happen to her, and spoiler alert, she gets decapitated. Against her wishes, Jin tries to fight Ogre but kinda sucks a bit and ends up being knocked unconscious. He awakens to find his house burnt down and a vanished mother who he saw die earlier, and so while his heart was filled with revenge, Devil comes back and scars Jin whilst very quaintly possessing him until the right moment. Jin then finds Heihachi, gets taught, school, and looked after by his lovely Grampy, and then waits for the moment that he's strong enough to defeat Ogre. When he turned 19, back to where we were, Heihachi then announced the King of Iron Fist Tournament 3, 15 years after the last, all to lure Ogre out. And there you have it. I got pretty deep all of a sudden, didn't it? But not only did the plot get a little bit deeper, but so did the actual game. Because the difference from the first to the second was so ginormous, it makes you wonder how Namco could even possibly go any further with it. But you know what? Somehow, they kind of did. Not only was this game responsible for my personal favourite incarnation of Yoshimitsu, but this game also featured, get this, even more than its predecessor. Instead of playing it safe and actually just physically throwing more content at you for a sequel, it instead absolutely, positively and most assuredly perfected the Tekken formula, and everything that made Tekken so brilliant to begin with is perfectly demonstrated 
integrated in this installment. You can tell it's good by the second you boot up the game because immediately this PS1 FMV has been nailed. Look at that! It actually looks pretty damn good, especially for 1998. It's one of the few instances where the FMV hadn't actually creeped the fuck out of me as a kid. And talking about looking amazing, the graphics this time around were even more detailed, more smoothly rounded and less blocky. And the characters almost blended into the environments and the scenery as opposed to sticking out sharply due to larger polygons. The animations were even smoother and they were even more intricate. The characters actually interacted more realistically and fluidly with how they were being attacked and even their static animations were so real, almost kind of eerie. Even if they weren't moving at all, they just looked perfect. There was also even more emphasis on the backgrounds and foregrounds because now the sidestepping manoeuvre had been fully implemented and implemented perfectly. It allowed players to be really fucking devious and just keep on moving back and forth to make full use of the highly detailed pre-rendered backdrops. Speaking of the terms of movement, one thing that they definitely nailed down forever and quite beneficially removed was the moon jumping from the last games. Now isn't that a little better? Even though it did stop players from stupidly dodging grounded attacks and it made air combos more controllable, manageable and easier to execute, I do miss it, I must say. It may have been silly, but god damn, it made some hilarious battles. Also, the combo list was still there, but fucking goodness, there was so much more to play with. Instead of just simply adding in more combos and leaving it at that, Namco had decided to include many more methods of combo and grab inputs and how they could be entered into each fight. Including air grabs, side grabs, grabs that could be part of combos, grabs that were combos themselves, more ways to escape from opponent attacks and grapples, more way to cancel out incoming attacks, more ways to counter-attack and the air juggling was easily at its finest. Because now, as the animations were even quicker, more responsive and more fluent, combining that with the stronger sense of character weight and gravity, this meant that the players could time air combos so much more stress-free and so much more satisfyingly. Speaking of quickness, Namco had also been working with a new and improved game engine, meaning that after you were down, you could be swiftly back up on your feet even before you could say, you bastard! Which definitely made fights more fair, more slick and even more action-packed. Not to mention there were loads more brand new characters to play with, and even though there were an overall two less characters than in Tekken 2, the other new characters made up for that with brand new martial arts styles to master and even new ways to play. And I want to kiss the person that included Eddie Gordo into the roster because you are so fucking clever. Fun fact, did you know that after you win a fight on any mode of this game, during the replay, if you hold down any of the attack buttons, your character will perform a different victory animation. That's cool, isn't it? Oh. And on Paul's and Brian's stage, there's a piece of graffiti on the wall that reads Soul Edge, possibly referencing another Namco fighting franchise. That's cool, isn't it? Also, which was kind of a shame, there were about eight less backgrounds in the game than in Tekken 2, which in turn meant less music tracks to accompany them. However, unlike the last game, in my opinion, the original arcade versions of the songs are infinitely better than the remixes. In my opinion, there's no character to any of the remixes, and if you ask me, they're all entirely forgettable. But the original arcade songs? Oh yes. But that doesn't change anything, I still prefer Tekken 2 soundtrack. Also, the cryptically bullshit unlockable characters made a return, one of which even included having to unlock a secret minigame known as Tekken Ball, and then beating the secret character in your first match. You won't regret unlocking him when you do though, believe me. And along with the immensely fun Tekken Ball, <laughs> I mean, it's Tekken Beach Volleyball. That could be its own fucking game. Seriously, I have spent so long playing this fucking game. It's amazing. It's one of the best minigames I've ever played. There was also a new additional mode called Tekken Force, where with any character you must traverse through a beat-em-up style game but with the same Tekken gameplay and controls. This then awards you with another secret character at the end, but it's one thing that does take a lot of skill, I must say. Unless, of course, you pick Kuma for the job and constantly spam this move here. You'll win in no time. And you'll also win in no time with the final arcade battle, Ogre. I don't know guys, for the supreme god of fighting, this guy is not too fucking good at his job if you don't mind me saying. I mean sure, his true ogre form is a fucking awesome and creepy design, but the challenge? <sighs> There's something about him that just felt too clumsy and I never had any issues taking him down. Not to mention there wasn't as much soul behind him with the stage, music and even the presence than with Devil in Tekken 2. I mean within seconds you know how much of a threat Devil is, the music kicks in, you see him rise up, you see the environment and how dark and foreboding and mirrored and ugh, it is, and Ogre just didn't have that for me. But then again that's just me. Maybe I'm a moron. <laughs> 
Now, one thing I really don't actually like, which they changed from Tekken 2, was unlocking the characters. Because in Tekken 2, you had to unlock your characters and do their mini-bosses with set and special characters. And if you weren't very good with that character, then you just had to get better at that character. And that was actually a really good incentive to get better at the game. But then in Tekken 3, they disregard that completely and just go with how many times you beat the arcade mode with any character. So every time you beat the arcade mode, you get a new character. You could just learn one character and then unlock every other character from that character character. But yeah, that's just, that's just something I didn't really like. It just gave you no real incentive to learn the true intricacies of the fighting with all the characters and instead played it safe and just let you do everything with one character, which I found kind of like a shame, really. Character. Character. So, does Tekken 3 hold up today? Oh my god, yes, it totally does. And it's often been called one of the greatest fighting games of all time, seriously. Look it up on Wiki, it's pretty insane. And to be honest, I can completely see why. It's pure, condensed, raw, awesome. And what was to come of these three games then? Well, Jesus. More canonical games further exploring the hilarious Mishima and Kazuma feuds, excellent quality spin-offs that are arguably better than the main games, weird ideas that were weird, and even some notable crossovers with other fighting giants. Oh yeah, and even some movies came out of this series as well, like um, um this this movie here, which completely ignored the plot of the games, and um, Tekken, the motion picture, which, which was, it was funny, and um, uh, oh, Blood Vengeance, which... That's just hilarious. Seriously, that's something you got to see to believe. That is so bad, it's hilarious. This is a fucking powerhouse of a series, and one that isn't showing any signs of giving up. And most of my top 10 favourite fighting games of all time are dedicated to Tekken installments. I love them that much. But if I had to pick my favourite one... <sighs> hideously close call again. Very, very close, but I'm gonna have to just stick... with two. Like I just said, this was another hideously close call, for Tekken 3 may have perfected the fighting, gameplay, graphics, and just about everything. And not to mention, it did properly reward players for their skill, and relied on nothing else other than pure skill due to the quickness, realism, and just pure awesomeness of the improved mechanics. But perhaps due to the leap in quality from the first game, and maybe a little bit of nostalgia, I do feel like Tekken 2 is my favourite. I prefer the higher number of characters, I prefer the soundtrack, I prefer the announcer, I prefer the raw and simplistic gameplay, I prefer the stupid downtime and tenseness of battles, I have more fun with the moon jumping over how dumb it is, and the pickup and playability is bar none due to not that many combos being overloaded into the game, and even though I do love True Ogre's design, I prefer Devil's Final Fight. It only won by a smidgen though, I must say. Oh, and last but not least, the sheer difference between 1 and 2 and 2 and 3 is incomparable. Tekken 2 brought so much more shit to the table, and Tekken 3 merely perfected it. So in terms of leaps in quality, I will always love Tekken 2 a little bit more. Excellent! Ay, ay, ay.